If you are like me, then you probably don't like to throw away your old or broken electronic devices. I always love to take them apart and have a look inside. Not only is it interesting to see how a manufacturer designed the circuits, wiring and overall packaging, but you can also salvage a couple of parts that might be useful for a future project. So in this video, I will show you what I think is worth desoldering and how to do this quick and easily. Let's get started. First of all, we're going to need a couple of old circuit boards and I certainly have collected quite a few of them over the course of about one year. Then we need the most important tool, the soldering iron. It doesn't need to be the most expensive one, a simple one also does the job. And if you're familiar with soldering, then you probably also know that the fumes which arise, especially during desoldering, can harm your health. We can get rid of them with a fume extractor. But since we want to keep this cheap, we can also build our own with a 12V PC fan. I started by cutting off the old connector and exposed the plus and minus wire of the fan. Then I also got myself an old 12V 1A linear power supply, cut off the old plug and stripped off the isolation as well. I soldered plus to plus and minus to minus, used shrinking tube to protect the connections and plugged in the adapter to test whether the fan starts spinning. Then we're gonna need a simple carbon filter, which will later get rid of most of the fumes. I just laid the fan on top and traced the outline very roughly with a box cutter. With a bit of force, I created my carbon filter square and separated it from its white layer. Then all we need to do is find out which side of the fan absorbs the air and which side spits it out. We want to secure our filter to the exhaust side with a couple of bolts and nuts. And it is done. Dirt cheap and effective. But because I later realized that my filter is a bit thin, I made another square and used two layers of carbon filter in the end. Now that I know that I am safe from all the fumes, I can say that I use solely the soldering iron and a bit of solder in 80% of the desoldering cases. Anything with two or three pins can easily be removed by adding a bit of new solder and heating up everything at once. Many parts fall on their own, but you can always pull from the other side to free almost any part. But if you want to remove components with more pins or pins that are just far apart, you might want to get yourself some solder wick. This way the liquid solder sticks to the copper ribbon instead of the solder joint. Or you can also upgrade to a cheap desoldering pump, which is useful if you need to remove a lot of solder fastly. But which components are worth your time, you might ask? Well, it always depends on what kind of projects you want to do. But there are a couple of things I never salvage. That would include every SMD part, doesn't matter whether it's an IC, resistor or whatever. They are just too tiny and fragile. And I'm not too much into SMD anyway. I usually also avoid ICs in dip form, since they mostly have no sockets and it takes an eternity to desolder every freaking pin. Also no resistors, ceramic disc capacitors and all the small stuff, since the legs are usually very short and you can get most of them for cheap. Simple wire and connectors are usually not worth it as well. Of course, there are exceptions like power cords, BNC connectors or 3.5mm audio jacks, which are definitely worth it. But what I always love to salvage are coils. All kinds of coils. They can be the most expensive passive component and you never know when you're gonna need one. The list of what I always get also includes relays, all kinds of heat sinks, which can be useful to for example cool down your voltage regulators, which I also always salvage, different kinds of electrolytic capacitors, film capacitors, motors, switches, push buttons and many components with this TO220 package. And if you don't know what component it is, then it is always helpful to have a computer by your side to google the part number. So you can decide easily which ones would make sense to desolder. 
And I also always save the screws when I take apart mechanical constructions. Trust me, you never know when you're going to need a certain screw. And there are always some, let's say, interesting parts, like these high voltage transformer or those lenses, which I keep for later even though I don't know yet what I'm going to do with them. Once everything is disordered, we can build small piles and use a transistor tester to find out the value of the coils or test the capacitors and transistors. At the end, I sort the parts depending on their value and put them in their corresponding tray. You may not save a lot of money by doing this, but if you are in a hurry and need a certain part, this can be your rescue. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And maybe you would like to support me with $1 per month for my channel through my Patreon campaign in order to keep such videos coming. Link is in the description. And also stay creative and I will see you next time.